glad. Yeah, that's that's really that really explains that. That's that's super. Um, thank you for that because that that will probably help a lot of people kind of get past a lot of these questions that why are some things working, why are some others you know not working or whatever. So that is a really big one to be clear of. Um, yeah, let me let me excuse yes. me, Charles. Let me let me also put in another key point because I've been doing this for 25 years and gone okay. through those layers that I that I'm talking about, what I have observed, and I've drawn the conclusion, which I feel is very accurate, is starting way back, I started studying all this in 1991-92, and in the early to mid-90s, there was a small group of people, we didn't have the internet, but, you know, we created sort of a network of linking to people, and there were, quote-unquote, what solutions, and I say in quotes because they ended up not being solutions. They ended up having hidden hooks. But they came forward. Somebody on the leading edge figured something out, how to address a point in the court system or with administrative commercial process or whatever it was. And invariably, every single time, there would always be a small number of people who were very successful with it. And what happened? They would then go out and teach it. They would say, this is what happened, this was my case, and I won, and this was the result, you know, whether it was fighting a tax issue, a court case, or whatever it was. And then they would go on the road, on the circuit, and they'd start doing seminars, and they would teach people what they did, and people would take it and run with it. And at a certain point, all of a sudden, nobody was getting remedy from it. And in fact, many people were being arrested and uh, tried and convicted and in many cases imprisoned for doing the exact same thing, including the, all the commercial processes that I was mentioning, including the so-called secured party, which is a commercial uh, process, all of those things. And so after seeing this, a dozen times over 20 years, it became very evident that it was a setup. Because if you can get a few people to go out there and say, do this and it's successful, and out of that you get hundreds or or thousands of people doing it and getting arrested and tried and convicted for it, what does that actually translate? Every time somebody is charged with something like that as a crime, even if they're not convicted, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars of bonds are created in each instance. When they charge a franchise, they, that's a public charge that carries a penal sum that has to be paid by time or fines or whatever. But underneath that, there's exponentially expanded bonds, which are debt, which are created off of the underlying estate. And those bonds are privately traded and have created vast amounts of off-book, quote-unquote, money, fiat-type money. That is what the system has fed off of for the last 50 to 100 years to fund all of their covert operations. So inadvertently, all these people were being planted as seeds to be set up, to be matured in their crime and then be harvested, be bonded and be monetized to to the tune of funding everything that was continuing to build and lock in our prison. And so that's where I came to understand the mechanism of the setup and the commercial function, the bonding and how that was done to maintain building the covert operations of creating this world the way it is today. Great. That's really um, covered a lot um, of that because uh, that's something that a lot of kind of we become suspicious of this sort of thing and uh, you never know when this, I mean, talk about brilliant. The system has been brilliant and you have to hand it to it that there's a lot of brilliant stuff that's been done. And But even more brilliant should be fathoming it out and working out how it's all been taking place. So this is why we've got you here to answer our questions and I'm really, really grateful to you for that. Um, so I guess at that point, let's go on. Um, the next set of questions are to do with gemstone. And um, I, I, quite a few of us have looked into um, what's, you know, some of the information that you've got on there. And I'm very grateful to have been able to get access to quite a bit of it. Um, so the next question uh, is asking, is the two years of study with gemstone 
based on a standing start, i.e. zero knowledge of this work. And mm-hmm. is the term reduced uh, for those with a level of background knowledge? Uh, oh, very good. Yeah, and, and just let's the last part of the question here. I'm going to miss the middle bit. I, the last part is, and is it really necessary to study and comprehend the history slash philosophy behind this situation? I would think yes. Yeah. Well, ultimately, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's an individual choice. Uh, I have felt okay. that it was absolutely necessary because it's it's a uh, interconnected, multidimensional puzzle, like like we've said earlier, we said last time, is that it's all hidden in plain sight. It's fragmented. It's like uh, like in the Jeff Berwick uh, interview, I, I uh, used the metaphor. Imagine you took five or seven or ten uh, very big, complex jigsaw puzzles and you mixed them all together. You know, it's hard enough to do one puzzle, 10,000 pieces or something, and put it all together to the finish. Imagine you took 10 of those and mixed them all together, um, and then you scattered them in some sort of magnetic field, kept them in a holographic or, or spherical suspension where you could see them all floating, but you could, it's very hard to see how they fit together. So if you pick one of those pieces and that piece had some sort of lineage of, of what created it, um, you could understand that. And many people do that with one piece or several pieces. But what is harder to see until you start peeling back the layers is the invisible lines that connect all the pieces. They connect to the puzzle that they're part of, but then that picture of that puzzle is connected to the other nine puzzles. And there's all these interactive, interconnecting pieces. So in my journey in this whole process, it has been a continual um, unfolding and unveiling of seeing pieces, having the ability to see the interconnections and begin to see a complete comprehensive whole picture. And it's taken me 50 plus years to do that, 25 of which was in the law, money, and history arena. Uh, as far as history, as far as I'm concerned, it's absolutely imperative to understand history if you want to understand the current world system, law, money, and related things. Um, it's History is not in the distant past. It's right here. Everything of the world system as we see it today has historical basis, and um, and it's it's layered with feedback loops, uh, veiling, mirrors, curtains, and um, each time you peel a layer back, and a awareness opens up, and you see how um, well I used to think this, and now I see that that was a complete lie, and I, it was actually the opposite. You know, a very simple example is the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution. Uh, didn't we all grow up thinking and being told that that was the greatest piece of writing ever created? Well, in fact, it's part of the uh, the bait and switch. Uh, it's entirely different than what we have been taught, and most people still think it is. Unless you peel back the history and understand it, you won't won't see it. So. Um, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely. Uh, you have to understand the esoteric aspect of it. You have to see the multidimensional aspect that I've described. And what I know happens is when you start integrating and making it your own and seeing it and seeing how the puzzle pieces work together, that's internally transformative. It's externally transformative too because it starts wow. engendering more and more uh, power within your capacity to see and understand the reality you exist in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make a lot of sense. As hard as it is, as it is to those of us that are a little bit intellectually challenged, myself being one of them, <laughs> I take a, I, I struggle with reading stuff, and I think Mia's the same. That's what she was saying. You know, she struggles with reading a lot of stuff, and I do too. But I think once you really start to get into this and you get your teeth into it, you start to put those pieces together, you read this and you read that and you start to get those pieces together, then you, you kind of like 
you want to go and learn more because it, 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 the pieces are coming, you're starting to see the picture. And yeah. the picture, yeah. when you start to see the picture, it's encouraging then. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, do you think those of us that have got a certain amount of knowledge are going to be able to do it in, in less than two, the two years? What would be okay, well, yeah. Um, let me make one point and then I'll answer that. Mm. But okay. I would suggest, what I suggest is everybody just reflect on where you're at today, what you have integrated as what you would consider a given, your common knowledge that you share with a lot of people in this community and so forth, uh, compared to five years ago. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. compare that 10 years ago. What did you yeah. know five or what did you not know five years ago right. that from that perspective was daunting and overwhelming today? It's a Absolutely. given. You know, so that's what we're yeah. doing collectively is we're breaking through all of these layers of distortion and mm-hmm. uh, by interface and osmosis with each other that it's opening it up. So where will we be five and ten years from now? Quite mm-hmm. <laughs> quite amazing, mm-hmm. I believe. Yes, So as absolutely. far as the period of study, uh, I think that's referring to the status correction course. You know, I may mm-hmm. have thrown out. A, a time frame. There really is no time frame. And for one thing, okay. it's it's never going to be over because there's layers <laughs> of this reality we don't yeah. even know exist. Um, yeah. And and so we don't. I really I I will put out and say, yeah, you know, you have to give yourself one to two years to really go through it. And is it different for somebody who has a lot of background? In some ways, definitely then you have pieces and you can understand in some ways um, the opposite because I have Mm. seen people really struggle with letting go of what they thought was true. You know, the example Mm -hmm. of the commercial construct being one of those points that some people cannot let go of it still and still believe that that's it. That's the answer. And we Mm. can't break through that. Um, And so but by and large, yeah, people who have a background um, are going to take through it easier and be able to let go of the preconceptions and move on into the broader understanding. Um, it's all about breaking down the programming. It's deprogramming and then reprogramming so that we <laughs> understand things at a whole different level. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Cool, all right then. So let's go to this question. We have number four, again from Mia. Um, it's, this is from, she's got a little quote here from one of the parts of seeing with real eyes that uh, talk you did at uh, Narcopulco. Um, the quote is, heart as light as a feather you could pass. Um, right. She goes on to say, however, those with enough money could pay their way in despite how heavy their hearts might be. Is it not true that this could be viewed as the situation with Pantera and Gemstone, i.e., those with dollars are unable, um, those without, without dollars are without unable dollars. to gain access to this info even if they wish to? This is not a judgment or criticism, just an observation. Um, so let's go with that first and then we go on a bit right. more about uh, payment. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well. First of all, let's let's look at that quote. Um, she's got a, a YouTube video, so it's referring to, like you said, the talk I gave down mm-hmm. in Acapulco, and in which I talked about um, the Egyptian construction that we still are operating within today. The the whole um, uh, basically the Isis Osiris mystery cult uh, and how that's set up with uh, the Egyptian pantheon, what's called the, the Council of Nine, the Ennead, how that was all constructed, which we won't go into here. Um, but as part of that was that Osiris was killed, dismembered by his dark twin set and then he was uh, re reconstructed remembered uh, and went down and lived as the god of the underworld and through which all the beings who died had to pass and pass the test of the scales with a feather on one side and they would weigh your heart and if you would pass or not and it is hardwired that whole construction is hardwired with the book of the dead because if you read the Book of the Dead, it's all about 
earning the ability, which gets down to the money system. This is how, what I saw when I looked at this, how the elite on this planet were constructed, so to speak, that obviously they had the ability uh, to join together as a uh, cabal or whatever and control money and control wealth and aggregate it and accumulate it. And so just like as today, it's been this way for thousands of years, the elite and, and or the aristocracy, the bankers and so forth um, uh, were dominantly in control of the social economic structure and accrued and um, had more monetary economic power. With that, they were able to pay the priests to perform more rites and rituals. And there was a hierarchical layering of how, you know, correspondingly how many rites and rituals were done for you was equal to how many layers of ascension you would go up into, quote unquote, heaven and how you could basically buy your way into heaven. You know, so that came through into the period of the last uh, 1300 years where the church started creating uh, obeisances and things you could pay for having your sins mitigated and all of that. So it's always been about money. Who's got the money to pay the church, the priest, the temple to uh, quote unquote be forgiven. Um, and like she's saying, yeah, but their hearts are really heavy. Yeah. So it's all illusory. But nonetheless, it's how the hologram that we've existed in and all of this has been created within as a hologram of deception has operated for thousands of years. Um, so it's the same system we have today. The elite are able to pay for being, you know, getting a free pass, whether it's, you know, committing uh, many crimes, murder, and otherwise, being able to pay the attorney, who's nothing more than a priest of the judicial temple, mm -hmm. get them off. Um, so it shows the uh, the complete upside down, ass backwards nature of the hologram that we exist in. Uh, so does this translate over to how we set up Pantera and Gemstone with donations that support us? building this? No, I don't think so. You are not paying us to be forgiven of sins or be able to pass the hierarchy uh, even if your heart is heavy. That's between you and you. That has nothing to do with us. Um, but, um, you know, and this point has been looked at, talked about, debated, uh, um, you know, said in many different ways in in my experience for years and years, whether this work should be paid for or whether it is should be free. There's some people out there who say, well, if you uh, charge money, then you're not really doing the work or something like that, which I think is a total fallacy and a complete uh, misconfiguration of, of of what we have to deal with in this world. Um, we take the donations that we've set up, which are exceedingly small compared to what uh, is out there. You know, when I talked earlier about the people who'd learned something, then they go on the circuit and they do seminars. Well, seminars uh, used to be anywhere from two to $500 for a weekend, just one weekend. Uh, many people, I went to seminars that people charge $5,000 for a weekend and I did that for over 20 years because I went wherever I needed to go and paid the price if that's what somebody said they're worth I said fine if I could find the money I'd, so I could get those pieces to the puzzle because I was a master puzzler and I was going wherever I needed to to find every piece available um, so the donation rates that we request uh, to me are exceedingly low but it's what has enabled us to build what we've built. There's no other way. Uh, I don't have a corporation that I'm making money at. I don't have a job. I don't have any of those things. And so between uh, gifts, donations, and different forms of funds that have come in, we've been able to bootstrap and build something that is quite um, quite unique out there, which is a continuous seminar in a continuous social uh, interactive environment where people meet, work together, study together. None of that 
was ever available in any of the places that I went to. You would go for a weekend and you'd go off. You'd meet people, yeah, and you could collaborate over the phone or if they were close by in person. But generally speaking, there was no continuity. And what we have built as a unique structure with a private society and now the architecture of the website and the database and everything we're continually building every day, um, the value is in really prices. It's incalculable. And as I said last time, those who um, don't have those FRNs, we work it out however we need to if they have the passion and the commitment to be part of adding their value to build what we're building together, which is a permanent creation now. It will continue to build and grow, and it's not me. Uh, I'm not the, you know, I, I don't own it. Uh, mm-hmm. And we've created a society and a structure, and we have plans. As those of you who went to the Gemstone website, you can see the master plan, very significant plans that are going to continue to grow and expand. And so far in this world, you got to use what they call money out there to make that happen. So we have bootstrapped it in in amazing ways to get where we're at, and we're continuing to build and grow. And for those who come on board, then make it your own, and you know, let's build it and grow it together. 